education is the backbone of every economy. It is a focal point of institutional advancement and also the institution of policies across a country and nation and the world at large. That is why it is said that education without moral is like a ship without a compass, may wander into nowhere. And it is why the United Nations may declare that education is the fundamental right of every person and every child, and that every child has that inalienable right to education. The African continent as a whole, ever since nations and states regained their independence, the aspect of development and institutional advancement has always been on the table, as many had wondered that why is it that 60 or 50 years after most nations in Africa regained their independence, instead they are running back to the colonizers to have their ends meet, despite the fact that majority of the raw materials, human resources, and also resources needed to advance the nations and their states is present here in Africa. Within the late the 1959 and also 1884, when the colonizers came to Africa, they, get, they got most of our parents into their ships and ferried them to their countries to develop their countries. And at the time, we saw how our parents fought back and our forebearers fought back to prevent their brothers and sisters, children, wives and cousins and nephews from being ferried to other nations across the African continent. And 60 years after we regained independence, we have had a reverse polling. Instead, we are bribing our way through the Mediterranean just to go and be enslaved simply because the aspect of advancement and development is not being taken into consideration as our leaders are more focused on getting money to equip and enrich their pocket rather than look at ways in which the nation can develop in such a way that the white man shall instead look to have and to come to Africa to enjoy the dividends of independence. The dividends of independence had made many Africans to wonder and to say it would have been better that the colonizer state rather than we because if we look at our educational system that is why john henry clark a famous pan-african afro-american analyst said that af ever since african nations regained their independence none of them changed the system in which they were being uh, governed that most of their structures mimic the colonizer and john henry clark said none of these countries that have a mimicking structure of the colonizers shall ever know redevelopment. And that is true when you look at Nana Akufo Ado policy and also when you move down to uh, Kenya, where you have the current president, President William Samuel Ruto. His policy is quite clear that it should be pan African. And when we go back to also late John Pombe Magufuli, Magufulizing Tanzania, it was a policy well instituted. And he borrowed for, from Mao Zedong in, uh, in China and also borrowed from other renowned communist nation. We are not saying that we must borrow. We are saying we must come up with policies that meet our aspiration. We are asking the question, looking at uh, the Minister of Higher Education, Professor Jacques Famindungu, last week was in Douala, in one of the higher institutions of learning, the Institute of the University of the Gulf of the Guinea, where he was inaugurating a building. He made it clear that universities must look for ways in which they can professionalize their program such that those who pass through this program should not feel entitled that they must have a job from the government. They should be able to create jobs and he enjoined the university to look at new ways in order to professionalize all their programs from the higher national diploma to the bachelor's to the MBA to the MSc and to the DBA program. And so therefore we're asking the question, professionalizing our higher education, what are the five key areas that we must focus? This is House of Commons with me, Tamai Javis. If you are just joining us, you're watching House of Commons, which is brought to you at My Media Prime Television. Fengu Dong Bangge.
satellite frequency kanasa channel 309 you're watching us on facebook and you have kanasa you can watch us on your tv kanasa channel 309 mo 17 to those who are having a different satellite provider free to air service and also follow us on facebook my media prime television or bt media group also on facebook and youtube channel bt media group here in the studio to discuss on all the on the, on the topic today professionalizing our higher educational system what are the five key areas that we must focus on in the studio we have engineer dixon who is also uh, someone that has created and is been and is creating an impact as far as uh, professionalizing our education is concerned in training cameroonians across the higher educational family to be able to impact their society from a professional basis not just limiting themselves to theoretical basis he is a firm believer that we must restructure our education to meet up with our existing reality not by the theories that we have been able to learn he is an advocate for objective criticism and those and believe that we must be able to have honest discussion if the nation must move forward engineer dixon happy sunday and thanks for joining us thanks very much uh, mr javis for having me in your studio i feel very proud being with you here today it is a pleasure to have you here first time ever mm -hmm. for house of commons Thank you, thank you. I've been watching your program for a very long time and I've been aspiring to be here. And thank you, you have made it possible for me to be here today. I'm happy. We want to thank you and we know we are going to benefit from your expertise because you have a wide range of uh, advanced, uh, wide range of experience when it comes to looking at this. Also in the studio, we have Professor Inonsen, who is someone also that is very professional and has been advocating for the fact that we must look also into our higher education and look at the things that work and those that don't and focus on those that work such that our youth shall be able to create value and in return create wealth. He is someone that believes that the educational system of Cameroon must not be tailored to us looking at how it was, but we should be able to have the reality. And he has trained thousands of students across Cameroon and beyond and also someone that have been able to mentor several PhD students in the recent one was the aspect of developing a system in which they can harness biogas as far as that is concerned. Professor Inonsen, thanks for joining us. I'm aware that the research which you supervise a student was also focused on petroleum, uh, various uh, the, the distribution across Douala, the hazard that it may cost if there is an incident. Thanks for joining us. Perfectly correct, uh, Mr. Jeffries. Thank you very much um, for inviting me. I'm so happy to be on this, uh, uh, on this forum today. Thank you very much. It's a privilege to have you all these. We also await Professor Akumbo Mark, who shall be joining us to discuss on this issue. Uh, these are the gentlemen, and if you are out there, you intend to participate on the program, the numbers are on your screen, or you want to be a member of House of Commons to participate <coughs> in a future discussion, you can reach me on the numbers on your screen, and I will include you into our WhatsApp group. When a topic comes that favor you, that is your expertise, you will join us here to discuss on this. These are the gentlemen, as I rightly mentioned, that we shall be discussing. I begin with you, Engineer Dixon. You are someone that has been uh, working with students as far as the higher education is concerned, and you have a wide range of industrial experience. Also, looking at the fact that you are an engineer, a practicing fee for that matter. When we look at our current educational system across the broad, I want us to have a global perspective. What are the five key areas that you think we should focus on? Uh, before I get straight to that question, I think we should try to dissect what a professional education is. Okay. Uh, I think a professional education is a formalized uh, system of education which is aimed at equipping participants with uh, specific skills that will permit them to integrate themselves in the corporate world. And that brings me to a, another question. Who is a professional? Uh, the first thing I want us to know, a professional is someone who has specialized skills. And I want us to also understand that having a specialized skill is not certificate. You can have PhD holder, you can be a PhD holder, but you don't have specialized skills. And uh, secondly, uh, competency. Competency and uh, pragmatism. That's what characterizes uh, a professional. The third is honesty and integrity. And uh, fourth, we have accountability. Every professional has to be accountable. And lastly, we have self-regulation. You, you must not be too emotional as a professional. You should know how to regulate yourself. And uh, the fifth point is that a professional should be smart in your appearance because that is what uh, uh, we convince people about what you know. That said, 
I come now to your question, my observation on the limitations we've had so far, and as well as five major areas uh, that needs to be uh, addressed. Uh, I think I'll just jump straight to the five major areas. The first areas I want to talk on is that the lecturers, I'll, I'll limit myself to where I am well versed, which is tertiary education. The lecturers in tertiary education needs to be professionalized themselves. I think it is the responsibility of every institution to see into it that we have lecturers that understand where we are and where exactly we want to take young Cameroonians to. Uh, I think uh, every lecturer will understand that we have three levels of reasoning which must be represented even in your exams qu exam questions. We have memorization, we have deduction, and we have induction. If we are going to create students or train students that will have impact in the society, then definitely we want to have students that operate in all these three dimensions of reasoning. So this cannot happen if the lecturers themselves don't understand this. So I think the first area we must look at is how we professionalize our lecturers Excellent. themselves. Uh, the second aspect, especially with private education, is that founders and management of institutions must get serious. I think uh, that uh, is what I've been observing for a very long time. We must get serious in what aspect. We should know what exactly where we want to take these children to. Education is not something we play with. Education is the backbone of every economy. And education is something that should not be taken lightly. So I think that everybody who wants to get into this business of education with respect to the private sector should be somebody who understands the stakes with respect to the president's vision, vision 2035. One of the goals is to develop local content. So if you have been given that opportunity to own an institution, to train young Cameroonians, you should get yes, serious. Yeah. The third point is that the minister should oblige the corporate world to accompany schools in training young Cameroonians. We have had instances where students can't even have internship. We have, it's probably the HNE HN program. Students have to do two to three months internship. But that is not the case as it pertains now. We have very few students who take this exercise serious. But how do you complement theoretical knowledge with practical knowledge if you don't take this uh, uh, curriculum structure seriously? So I think the minister has to intervene there, probably to have a meeting with the corporate world for them to understand that to train a young nation towards development and uh, uh, um, self-realization, the, the business world has to be involved in this training because there is a model which was developed by an American institution. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a symbiotic relationship between higher institutions and industries. The industries have problems. The schools research on these problems. And the schools provide what? Innovations which are then adapted by the industries. Industry. So that is the symbiotic relationship that must be exi that that should exist, but it's not the case now. As I'm talking to you, Mr. Jervis, and uh, uh, the the fourth area is entrepreneurship. Uh, I think you made mention in your intro that the minister uh, uh, highlighted that uh, people should not be entitled to certificates. The fact that you call me an engineer, that certificate should not make me feel like because I have that <laughs> certificate, the government must give me a job. What am I doing? What am I doing with that? I think entrepreneurship, every institution should understand. And when we talk of entrepreneurship, when I look at entrepreneurship paper in some schools, you say, what, who is an entrepreneur? What is entrepreneurship? That's rubbish. Does that child understand the tax system of this country? Does that child know the steps to create a, an industry? If, you tell, if I meet your, your student, go and create an industry, can that child tell me I'll visit this office, visit this office, and this is what this office can offer, this what this office... Which that, is the general knowledge. Which is general knowledge. These things are there, but how can you bring somebody to teach entrepreneurship and the person cannot bring this aspect close to children? So children understand exactly what they do after training. We talk of student understanding financial system. To me, uh, a financial analysis is no longer a cause for business students. If we are thinking entrepreneurship, every field of study should incorporate <coughs> managerial economics and financial analysis. Every field of study should incorporate leadership and management courses, which will equip the students to understand how to manage people. Uh, Mr. Jervis, it may surprise you that we have graduates who can't even work in a team. You, you find yourself in a team in the corporate world. Instead to complete the team, you are competing with members. 
Why? Because from their school, where they are coming from, they were not trained to work in team. They were trained to do one-man show, showcase themselves how intelligent, how smart they are. And that is a big problem. And if we don't start training these students in school, that they should work together, it will be a, pro a, a, a bigger uh, challenge for us in the future. And talking again on entrepreneurship, schools should learn how to create boot camps. Boot camps is an American model where incubators are being trained. Uh, incubators are, 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 are students who are about to hash their businesses. You must train them and then guide them. So they should be assigned coaches. Okay. And uh, lastly, uh, Mr. Jervis, I think curriculum review is something that must be periodic. Why? Because the world is changing so fast. I can cite you now that artificial intelligence is almost taking over our world, but there are schools that don't have artificial intelligence in their curriculum. <laughs> Today we have chat GPT. Everybody is shouting. Chat GPT is an app that can, that can write a whole yes. uh, program. Yes. So where, where is the place now of a software engineer if I can go to chat GPT and create my program for website or applications that I want to use? So I think that uh, for curriculum, develop a, a, a restructuring and review should be a periodic something like I propose every five years. We also have a system where I can take your voice and write it. It's something and it voiced that you are the person that made it clear. Exactly. And people just believe because exactly. I use your voice in the software. It, exactly. The world is going crazy. So we can't, Mr. Jervis, we can't continue to, to, to feel like, oh, because we have one of the best program, we'll hang to that program. We don't interact with other institutions to see what they are doing, okay. how advanced they are. So that brings me to my five proposals that I think, uh, if reviewed, we may okay. have something better. We will be coming to look mm -hmm. at a lot of this. You have actually elaborated mm -hmm. more on this. Let's talk on this brief transition. We will come back, mm -hmm. we'll get to Dr. Uh, Professor Innocent and other members of the panel who have just joined us so that they can settle. Thank you for joining us. And of course, uh, Professor Innocent, I'll continue with you. Um, Engineer Dixon elaborated a wide range of issues. He talked about the aspect of looking at the fact that we must uh, equip, uh, 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 we must look, be honest, we must look at accountability, uh, self-regulations, uh, self, uh, and also we must be smart. And we must first begin by making sure that our lecturers are professional before looking at professionalizing our, our higher education. And he also mentioned the fact that most of the lecturers uh, still practice what it was in the beginning and now and socially be that we need to have a curriculum review you are a pedagogue and supervisee to many phd holders where you follow what he actually made uh, pointed out is that not where we should focus on or you have a contrary view um, uh, thank you so much once more mr jervis i think um i was just listening to engineer dixon and um it was um very very interesting his expose and the uh, uh, most of what he, most of the points that he has raised are very, very pertinent. But uh, when it comes to professionalization of education in Cameroon, for example, this is not a new concept. It's an old concept. It had existed. But um, I think uh, I would have uh, maybe, if I were given the opportunity, I would be talking about the professional development. That's innovating professional development in Cameroon. That is, what are the five key areas, or what are the key areas that you can target? So, like he really said, you talk about curriculum development, which is very important. You talk about artificial intelligence, machine learning, and other like. Those are very, very important concepts that you have to look into. Because today, for example, uh, but let me also ask a question. There's a question that we're still to consider when it comes to the development of curriculum. The first thing is, what is the problem? 
what problem is this curriculum going to solve? If we have the problem now, we cannot gather the key actors, which include the business community, which consists also the entrepreneurs as well. They come in now with the experts that we have in higher education and in other domain. They come together now, then we can come up now with a curriculum that can solve the problem of our country for that particular period. But then, let me tell you that this also depends on the government. Because uh, it doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean that we have been a failure. No. I must tell you that the problem of professionalization of this, uh, of professional education in this country has been actually because of government policies. The political will of the government determines anything that a country has to be. From there now we have higher education, which is a second key sector with research too as well, because research, research has to do kind of research to ensure that whatever we are talking about is feasible for implementation and for the development of the country. Higher education at the center together with research too, they can now incorporate other sectors, such as agriculture, health, engineering, and then the applied sciences. So that is what I can see for the moment. Prof, um, let me just take on some messages before still coming back to you. Eh? Yes. This one I read, it says, um, this is Andy, Mark Andy, Emo's writing, uh, who is uh, watching us, favorite viewers on Facebook, says, uh, hello guys, this guy is pregnant with knowledge. Please do not join CPDM because we need you to teach the minister. Thanks for coming. I'm sure they're talking to you, uh, Engineer Dixon, uh, that you should not join the CPDM. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Progressive> <laughs> I, I love this topic so much, uh, sir. I defended a dissertation on teachers' professional profession on teachers' professional knowledge on students' academic performance last year, which I discovered a lot of concern. Professionalism, everything boils down to our program and qualification of teachers, not only in certificate but in skills, personality, just uh, to name but a few teaching. Uh, becomes an option to so many people today in the quest for money, not post, uh, posterity, teaching students to reproduce and not to produce working towards examination or end of course certification. Clovis writing from Yaoundé. This one right, it says, uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Javis. I solely welcome this debate topic because it is very timely owing to the fact that some of our students will be sitting in their end of year examination. My contribution on the topic stem on the topic stem on the following uh, five dimensions agriculture, entrepreneurship, technology and technology and engineering, politics and moral education. I am Ndo Valentine writing from uh Bo Bakundu. This all right read rise it says uh, Happy Sunday nice program. Uh, welcome, Engineer Dixon. And uh, you are eloquent. And thanks for coming, Professor Innocent. It's been a while we have you on the show. We like your critical analysis. And thanks for coming. This is Joel writing from Boya. This one writes, it says, um, good afternoon. Uh, good morning, Mr. Javis. Please put an uh, insert question at the end of your topic. I think um, that should have been done by the, uh, the producer. Uh, thank you very much for that. We are open to that. I'll stay briefly with you before coming to the other members of the panel. He also made mention of the fact that we must look at induction. But how many of these our professors are actually being inducted to look at what is, what is the reality? Because we have a lot of professors who say, do you know where I studied? I study in this. And they are not willing to change. Because we are talking about iPhone 12, iPhone 11, Pro Max, iPhone, t as we speak, innovations are coming on, on a regular yeah. mm -hmm. and we are still been teaching our students uh we discovered the zero to india vasco da gama uh we have still been teaching them uh photosynthesis in a lighter mode and still be now in america there's also research on transgenderism so the world is changing how are we protecting our space how are we making people to see that uh we are changing the changing landscape i think a key question should be what are the development needs of cameroon of it course, you be, may mention that the fact that we must first all come together and identify our problems. Yes, it should not be doing what the Americans are doing, doing what the Europeans are doing, and whatever thing. It should be doing what Cameroonians need in this century. Because, for example, I, I, was, I had a, a debate with some of my colleagues in school when we talk about writing models when it comes to artificial intelligence, machine learning, and all the like. They said they want to train them to pull models. Mod, modeling what? How can those models help to solve the Cameroon problem of today? 
if we want to create models that can solve American problems, European problems, then those models may not work in our own situation here. So what I want, want to think about is this. We look, at, we look into our business environment. We look into the requirements of our country. We look into the development needs of our country. And then we develop those kind of solutions or models that can solve our, our own problems. The question now Let me tell be, you, what is the Cameroon problem? The Cameroon problem has to, when you go down into the banks, into all the business institutions that have in this our uh, in these our communities, they have problems. There are some of them that have, that have marketing problems, for example. Some have to do with market, market segmentation. Some have to do with solving default of loans in different institutions as well. Those are areas at minimal that our students in the university have to be trained on how they could solve the problem. Let me tell you, those are some of the, the things that they can do. I've carried out research with some of my students. We have implemented them in some of the microfinance institutions and uh, the delinquency rates are falling. Let me tell you, the moment that we allow banks to go bankrupt, for example, when delinquency rate becomes very, very high, the more these banks will be unable to provide loans, the more they will, they will be unable to reach out to the poor generations and therefore there will be no business creation and therefore there will be no job creation too as well and that case too our country will be moving backward as it has been the case in the last 40 years joining us here also is professor akumbong professor akumbong uh thanks for joining us and you've just joined the conversation when we look at uh, the aspect of professionalizing professor innocent made mention of the fact that we must first of all look at uh, the common problem now the common problem you are an entrepreneur and also someone that has been versed in terms of looking at pan-africanist we want to believe that we should look at the african problem and uh, the solution to an african problem not a western solution to an african problem what then is a cameroon problem okay uh thank you for the opportunity i actually want to say hello to all those who were ahead of us and uh, it is my pleasure actually being on this platform with all of you and to Cameroonians listening to us this uh, beautiful afternoon, I think uh, discussing about the Cameroon problem is more of globally discussing about the African problem. We have a problem which sank deep into us, which came from colonization. We have a colonial system that is the running, even though with a disguise, uh, 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 should I use the word uh, independence. independence behind it? Automatic. <laughs> so we 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 still have this issue of we are depending on what was brought to us, which was working with the white man. I will let us understand that the purpose for which the white man brought in education, paid their system, their educational system that was brought to Africa, was mainly to produce intermediaries individuals who could work for them in order to be able to enslave those who were down there so what am i saying for example if you were taught arithmetic or mathematics as it is called today it was for the purpose of helping them them count what belongs to them if you were taught english it was for you to be able to read and write their reports and so every that's why during those days when you go to school you had an opportunity to have jobs so our parents used to say you need to go to school have good grades so that you can have a good job that used to be the secret to financial uh, wealth to financial creation as well as uh, development in africa but that was based on the european mindset which we received that colonial system has failed and it is failing even back there because there was a time which uh, I think in the early uh, back in the 80s even in Europe education was not as professionalized as it is today and the whole idea about education was in fact to help school individuals in a particular format because I will say this school there's a difference between schooling and education there's a big difference between schooling and education. Those who, you can go through school but not educated. What's the difference? Yes, we are going to talk about the difference. A lot of persons have been schooled, which implies that they have gone through the government's formation system. There is a curriculum drawn for one purpose, and that purpose is to guide your mind towards a particular direction. 
and this educational curriculum that we are talking about this schooling school uh, curriculum that was set up was set up with a target there was a purpose when it was developed and if you look at the lifetime of building curriculums in africa it is really a problem because it takes close to 50 years for a curriculum to be changed and that becomes a serious problem because before let's just say 30 something years before you the curricula the, uh, the curriculum is changed it takes a long period of time for individuals to adjust into it and before that happens we would have the society would have long gone and so that becomes a limiting factor when we come again to talk about education i would say education in itself you come from it comes from the latin word educos and educos actually means to bring out from within to pull out that which you possess within and so education was meant to pull out what you possess within you and so it was supposed to be a, 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 a means through which our human resource that which we possess our potential as they call it that sh that could be pulled out and that is the secret behind innovation because once an individual is not formatted in his mind to think that the best way out is to follow a school system then you realize that he can freely think on what he can add to the community for example I want to use we are talking today about artificial intelligence we are talking about all what today you see uh, most of the times we find ourselves on facebook social media we are busy the guy who came out with this social media stuff mark zuckerberg which we are talking about facebook did not go to the best schools on earth like most of us we know he's not a phd holder he's not, a PhD holder. <laughs> he's not. He, yes he dropped out of school uh, today, most of us, we are doing uh, uh, computer engineering and coming out with different... <laughs> I want to say this categorically. Steve Jobs and Steve uh, 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 Winyak never actually had PhDs. They never had... Uh, they dropped out of school. And if you want to also come back, we are talking about Microsoft today. Bill Gates never, when he dropped out from school, second year in the university, to go bring out what he possessed within and that is the secret to development so we have to be able to identify the difference between schooling and education it is not because we say we need to professionalize our education what are we professionalizing in our education we are not talking about professionalize professionalism we are talking about professionalizing our school system because the schools actually uh, have taken this uh, uh, issue of trying to bring race individuals who do not have the strength to be able to face the society we are in a fast moving society but our schools are backward in relation to you spoke about the 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 the, the, the curriculum uh, 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 yeah, development you, you talk about we need to talk about so with that it is a serious problem with the way our world is moving this rate at which the world is moving i don't think that five years even is a, we need at least every year there's need for a, a renewal within that system that will permit our children to be able to cope with the fastness of the changing system the, yeah, of the changes uh, uh, there's something i hold in my spirit that i actually wanted to release before you see I wrote an article about the entrepreneurship that we teach in our system, our school system today, and the entrepreneurship in, re in the real world. What happens in the real world and what we teach in schools do not match. Why? Because we, we, we like presenting theories which we sit in our offices or might be behind our computers and develop rather than went down to the field to look at the practical thing and so i made a proposal that if we have to teach entrepreneurship we should bring in individuals who are actually practicing entrepreneurship to come into the classrooms to teach we shouldn't talk about what we do not know you know uh, most of us who teach on this idea of entrepreneurship are just uh, we, we just got an mba in the one 
might be luxurious institution and then we thought might be business management in those days or let's say the business model that was used to manage corporations in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s still the same way that we need to introduce in building startups today when you talk about entrepreneurship you are, bu you are directly talking about running a startup because a startup is something complicated to begin with it does not have a market it does not have any customer it does in fact the people don't no even structure. know what you doesn't have any structure so there is need for us to be able to let our young people know that there is need for you to build a business model which is a canvas because a business model canvas is something that the customer might not accept you need to know that run being an entrepreneur you should be an individual who is willing to test everything it goes with try and error it goes with practical field work and most entrepreneurs of what today young people i see saying that they are entrepreneurs they sit behind an office they develop an idea and they say okay this is it no you won't succeed doing that you must be ready okay. to fail in the field before you can actually come up with a model that is working and until the customer or say the market accepts your idea or you work with the market the customers will develop an idea you shouldn't step in and say that the market will accept my business proposal there is practically no business plan for entrepreneurs and th those are individuals that they create as they go so there you can't teach that in a classroom practically the theories you develop will not help them yeah, because in he's succeeding. an issue that um, <laughs> if you look at the way even entrepreneurship lessons have been given that a student should be able to retrain on what it takes to open a business yes and should be able to know the offices that you need to follow to open that business in order to legalize that business for example today we are talking about uh, um let's look at the world of media in itself the media uh we have electronic media where somebody can sit in his room mm -hmm. and has his podcast mm -hmm. and have advert and generate money from it and that person definitely will not definitely need to pay tax because we have not had a, an updated tax system yeah. because our members of parliament still look at tax as the old days that it must be a structured company based there have his location have his location but we have people making thousands of money online without having a, yes without but, that's, but, so but, but that's, that's the system you know there is the, you know <laughs> taxes were actually not uh, the tax system was actually not created in order to punish businesses it was created to rather punish those who do not want to add to the community so i'll be sincere business people know how to come up with strategies on how not to follow uh, the, the, the not to fall into the trap of the business system so it is not a bad thing to see it's taking an advantage yeah I'm, sit in your house advantage. I'm, just to saying that, <laughs> I'm just saying that we look at the fact that for example you don't need to have billions to open up television stations now because we have the internet the online the ai and YouTube. we have you to have the, the, the rotated cameras that revolve and round and sometimes you just need to have a rotator a rotator and you have four cameras pick all your members of panel so that's the innovation we are talking about where we are in a rapidly changing where for example we're looking about helicopters if you, are, you need to do a video clip you need a, a, a you need a helicopter you need a pilot you need a, a cameraman to get it but now we have drone drone so the drone now takes everything so we don't need to buy fuel helicopter we don't need to buy fuel <laughs> we don't need a pilot you don't need to buy the helicopter you don't need a cameraman and a camera to station on that taking that overhead shot with the drone you can just sit and get it so how many so we have about four people who have lost their job because of entrepreneurship because somebody looked at problem and proper solution mm -hmm. so now we are in that rapidly changing way which i agree with you that there is need for that review and prof said we should look at also the Cameroonian problem and so therefore uh we have asked what is a Cameroonian the problem Cameroonian problem the Cameroonian because problem we say before we uh look at professional professionalizing our higher education let's have an understanding as to what professional is and you actually articulate i'll be coming back to you and prof let me get to nick nick i, I know when we look at this what is your view about this uh entrepreneur professionalizing our higher education you have gone to the you have gone to university and you are now a teacher at the secondary school level where you look at the way in which our higher education is structured do you think that these kids will be leaving their advanced level will get into the university will be able to meet the changing reality that you do no, i don't think so the issue of education in Cameroon is not is not only focusing on the higher education, but it is a kind of global problem within Cameroon. If we want to talk about education, it should be from the threshold to the tertiary level. All of these levels need innovation, they need changes. 
we cannot just focus on one sector like the tertiary education and then forget about uh, those who are producing these products and sending to the tertiary sector. So that's where the, the problem is. The problem is, to me, a matter of policy. The problem is a matter of leadership. The leadership, the current leadership of the country doesn't take this into account, doesn't take the is issue of education of the people into account very seriously. Because if you look at every nation, we keep blaming our problems to colonialism, which to me is Cameroon wasn't the only nation that was colonized. The problem should be ourselves. If you look at other countries like Malaysia, Singapore, they were also colonized. But look at their, their educational sector. They are far more advanced than us. They were at the same level with us in the 60s and 70s. But the leadership of those countries were able to transform their economy, their educational sector f within a very short period of time. In, in our own case, we keep doing the blame game. To me, our problem is at the level of leader because the leadership defines how the nation moves. In Cameroon, we can we are on that kind of a, a one directional thinking system. You cannot think above the head of state. That's how our system has been designed to be. If you look at our university systems, they have designed their curriculum, and it is difficult for the various universities to think above what the government has designed, which is a, a meaning that all of this system kind of key innovation. A university may want to innovate, but they are afraid to go beyond what the ministries have defined. So this becomes a problem in a country that wants to emerge, in a country that wants to compete with other, a fast-changing way. So if you want to look at our problem is at this level, our problem is not because the white man colonized us. No, I refuse to buy that, buy that kind of idea. If we keep blaming us, we have 50 years or 60 years into what we call independence, which is, uh, and we have not been able to do a lot because the people who are the, the various actors of independence are see some, the same kind of people when you at say, the moment. When you say, you made a statement that uh, you cannot think above the head of state. What do you mean by that? Because um, we, the head of state did not ask the lecturers not to be professional. The head of state did not ask the government not to look at the, ch the changing landscape. Because we've had, look like he mentioned the aspect of founders and managers must get serious. And you also, from your introduction, talked about the fact that private higher educational system. So, briefly, Prof, I'll come to you. When you talk about that, you cannot think above the head of state. What do you mean? It's not the head of state that supervises students. Yeah, but he's the guarantor of we, the head of state was voted. But in the Cameroonian context, we are, we are talking practicality. Was we are talking, voted. The head of state was voted and is a guarantor of what, everything in Cameroon. And we are looking at the political system. We are talking pragmatism. We are looking at what occurs in Cameroon. We, we have seen minister acts on high instructions of the head okay. of state. Now, they don't think for themselves. Nick, I want the to way, go yeah. practical. You say uh, mm. ministers mm. don't think for themselves, yes. uh, that they mm. cannot think above the head of state. Now, let's mm. keep aside this higher, the, private, the state universities. Let's come to the private university. Mm. Uh, we have the proliferation of private universities. In fact, mm. as we speak now, private mm. universities are more than state universities. Yeah. And just let's mm. get to Boya. Mm. Boya is a citadel of several higher institutions. It's and you keep hearing the word professional, professional, entrepreneurial. Um, Wait, let yeah. me come. <laughs> professional entrepreneur. Is it the head of yeah. state that commands these people that restructure your program to this? Don't pay teachers this. Don't invest in your lab. Don't do this. Despite the exorbitant fee that some of these universities mm. collect as tuition. Is it so we still blame the head of state for that? That's to go to the negligence of the state. Don't forget that these private universities are under the tutelage of state universities. You cannot you cannot own a private university in Cameroon without without the supervision of these state universities. Yeah. 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 You, you react to that. I, I am saying that the private universities, their curriculum are not designed designed by themselves. They are still designed by the Ministry of Higher Education to solve a particular problem. As to, we are not talking about what goes on there, the kind of and problems... And who cannot facing, think above the head of state? They cannot think above the head of state. Where is that written? Of course, that is the... the I was... The, the, I was... The silent understanding of what will happen in Cameroon. They cannot think above the head of state. Honest. Yes, let, 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 me, let, me, let me kill you. Yes. I was at uh, IUG, University of Gulf of Guinea, Friday last week at 7 p.m. 
uh, convening the Minister of, High, Minister of State, Minister of Higher Education, Professor Jacques Farmer Dongo. During the inauguration of the building, the new building, the Campus Numeric, <coughs> as they called it, the minister in his speech, um, um, unfortunately, I did not play it. I'm sure next week Sunday will play it so that you can follow and uh, give an analysis. He said, when I was recording, he said, higher education needs to look at professionalizing and that universities must embrace professionalization and that universities have the task to be professional for what, for example, without no publicity, what I usually as instituted in their campus, he was praising them for the uh, for embracing IT, artificial intelligence. Now, is it that that university received a different instruction from the head of state and the other universities in Douala had different private, I'm talking about private, I don't want to go state-wise, have different also in thinking from the head of state, different instructions when we look at this. Also, we are talking about IUC has also something similar. We are also looking at this university in Yaoundé, uh, this new university in Yaoundé. Uh, ICT University has also a structure that is adapting. The Catholic University so we also have a structure that's adapting. Other universities, do they have received different instruction from the head of state as compared to others? Where well, you say they cannot think above the head of state. What do you mean? All I'm saying is that the, uh, the private universities are guided by clear cut policies that are defined by the government. And it is the place of the government to supervise and see what goes on in this university. But they, because they are the ones who give them authorization. Mm -hmm. And the rate at which they give authorization, to me, I think that they don't really do supervision to see what really goes on in these private universities. They, they may be doing some wonderful things. Many of these private universities are also in partnership with foreign universities. Okay. Don't forget mm -hmm. that, that they do a kind of exchange. They do a lot of exchange and they kind of compete, they, they kind of send their students to go do exchange courses in, in most of these foreign universities and the rest. All we are saying is the private university system in Kawa was created to solve a problem. <coughs> our issue, our re, uh, uh, analysis should be whether they are really solving this particular problem they were created to solve. If others are not... What are uh, these problems? Problem, problems of professionalization that maybe most state universities are doing them also the private universities are also doing because the private universities are being tutored by these public universities and they, they, to me if they are not solving the problem to which they were created to be I'd, I'd rather see it in a case where most of the private universities now their aim are just to maybe make money not to kind of solve the problem they were really created to be. Because if it is not just to make money, the rate at which the government give authorization to creation of this private university, many of them don't even have permanent structures. Many of them okay. are operating or rented structures, and so on and so we'll forth. We'll be coming back so, to you. Uh, yeah. Briefly, you want to, oh, he takes, yeah, then you come, we'll yeah. come to your time. Yeah. There are some things I just want to yeah. just cut across before I, I'm sorry, please. Okay, I, uh, Professor Como made some statements here with regard to uh, professionalism, which are very, very important to us. Well, he spoke about uh, the aspect of uh, teaching and other like. However, the quality of education is very, very important when it comes to professionalization. It's a key determinant. Again, to you, we also have to incorporate th those aspects of theoretical, those theoretical aspects which are necessary. Yes, to come out with uh, the novel. Uh, circumstances when it comes to because we learn from those ones to come up now with whatever thing they want to come up with we can adapt those ones to our own situations too as well and then again when it comes to the context or to the aspect of Cameroon government which uh, Mr. Nick is talking about I think that he has a point somehow just take for example gov let me tell you government seem not to be interested when it comes to training experts that can professionalize education in the country let me tell you, Mr. Jarvis, long ago, I'm talking about maybe more than 40 years ago, Cameroonians had, had scholarships. Some have been sponsored by the government. Let me tell you, I had scholarship from the Cameroon government. I spent seven years on the Cameroon government scholarship. I didn't go there alone. I went there with about 32 others. But just not up to 10 of them have returned to this country. I think you see that. That professional knowledge that these students learn. because so we now blame Cameroon government for the They, they do not them. even monitor the students at all. But let me tell you, when I was, when I was out there, we were from Kenya, from Uganda, from Nigeria, for example, they were in constant contact with the ministries. And uh, just about 
six months before the end of your program, they write you and they ask you, is there anything that you would like to use to work with in your office so it can be very efficient? Then the candidate will make a list and give them. I'm talking about the case which I know so well. Kenya, I had visited Kenya too, and I saw the office of my friends there. Tanzania is the same case too as well. And they work in Nigeria, for example. My friend was working with the, with the minister of uh, road construction, something like that. So the, the necessary technology to construct good roads that will not get spoiled after about two months, like the case that I'm witnessing here in Cameroon here. In Douala, for example, you have good, uh, those kind of roads. You will not have that in Nigeria. And then again, too, you find out that we pay taxes to the government. There's no single individual in Cameroon who doesn't pay taxes. What does government do with, those, with, with, with that money? They would have equipped the universities. Our private universities are more equipped than the government universities. What do we have? Just take a look. Just walk down here. I pick up the set. Go to the Angas and see what we have there as uh, equipment for laboratory. Then go to Sable here where you have for uh, Istaba. Move there. Whether it is carpentry, whether it is whatever thing, they have well equipped laboratories. Students come out and able to fabricate. I'm telling you what I, what I saw. Although we send students to the field to go there for internship for about three months, five months, not like, these students come back and they are unable to do certain things. You can find students go out for internship. Like those who are doing a technique de construction, you say, for example, when they go in, they will hire these guys that are found in the garages. They will fabricate things, and someone will tell you this is three centimeters, but you are seeing one meter. But then they just have the mansion, they go out there. They come to defend. Yeah, they come to defend. That, that's, that's how the situation is. <laughs> Let me tell you the situation. This, this, is a, this is the reality. Government has to take its responsibilities by making sure that the universities are well equipped. If you go out of it, if you take the University of Bermuda, for example, where you have the performance being better, and even the University of Boya, where the performance is even best, I mean for the government universities, it is because of the fact that the parents of the students are doing their own best. They are contributing to build those laboratories. The University of Boya, for example, the Faculty of Engineering and Technology, you, do you know that the software that maybe you used it as well to check your marks directly online, that software was developed by students from the Faculty of Engineering and Technology. And it's through professional training, that laboratory, it's not equipped by the government. And let me tell you, even here in the University of Douala, for example, I do not know of any laboratory that has been equipped by the but government. But professor, before coming to um, Mr. Engineer Dixon, professor, we see both. Excuse me, please. Can you, you cannot use just the theory alone. You cannot use only the, the quality of the education itself, which is even not professor. actually of high quality, Pro to professionalize education in your country. Professor. We need those equipment. Professor. The practical equipment are needed. Mm -hmm. Prof. Yes. Year in, year out, we see Senate meetings mm -hmm. at these universities, state universities, yes. defend huge sums of budget mm -hmm. for their structures, yes. research grants. Where do all those money go to? That is a very big question. It's just like the minister. When we say the government is not providing, but the government, we see the budget. The budgets are in the know. Where do they go to? How it are is, they being spent? It is really the research strange. grant that these lecturers receive, how do they spend it? Let me tell you, Mr. Javis, that's a very, very powerful question you asked me which is very, very pertinent. But let me tell you that uh, if we are having something like Delta X, it is just too small. I'm talking about something <laughs> which is not too small. In terms of grants, let me tell you, from what we are seeing, from what we are seeing in our universities, especially here at the, the National Highly Polytechnic Institute here of the University of Douala, it is thanks to the new rector that we have now. Like you see, the minister came to inaugurate the new campus that is yeah. on there. The man has, in fact, the new rector has done something. That's someone who loves Cameroon. He wants to use the little, a little bit of everything that's given yeah, to that, himself. Those are the kind of that we are talking about. We don't have those kind of people now in Cameroon. Those kind of writers are not there. How many of them are there? Before him, how many writers have been there? They are not spending their lives at Kotege. Okay. Prof, uh, briefly, sir, I've got to introduce you. Dixon, there, yes. Prof. Kumo, since you have used your time already. Yes, uh, Prof. Thank you. <laughs> you talked about, I, act, as I spoke of the uh, uh, grant, mm -hmm. a budget that I've been defending. You said these are just small ads. But don't you think that begins with a drop? before moving why don't we become accountable with this job jobless and see how we, we is being used for example our universities now depends on government subvention mm -hmm. private state universities, state like universities. Nothing does, any, is there anything that stops the faculty of agriculture to have a big plantation fund to generate revenue for itself to fund their laboratory Wait, how do you acquire the land is there anything pro like in you other state university and mm -hmm. we know even secondary school have vast hectares of land mm -hmm. for example with the secondary school i went to in 20 in 2005 mm -hmm. gss bombay bakunu mm -hmm. there was a very big land who gave the land please the, gov the government gave a very big land all state university we look at their land now let me not go to agriculture alone let's mm -hmm. look at 
at engineering. Yeah. Are there not things that we could have developed? Like COVID-19 came. Very mm -hmm. few of these institutions could produce face masks, hand sanitizer. We were importing these things. But we had universities mm -hmm. that could generate resources. Mm -hmm. And Professor Bernard Fallon of mm -hmm. Blessed Memory said in his book titled The Genuine Intellectual, mm -hmm. I want people to read that book, he said that um, a university without a library, mm -hmm. research facility is more of a glorified secondary school. Exactly. So therefore, are you saying that we have more of glorified secondary school in state universities than the universities themselves? You are saying so. <laughs> you are actually saying so. Because just take a look, please. Even go to the main library here of the University of Douala. Which kind of books do you have there that can solve the problem of our time? Come to even the National High Polytechnic Institute here of the University of Douala. Go to the libraries and see. Ex In Kenya, for example, when I, I saw the, the libraries are up to date. They don't use uh, this kind of uh, a cake libraries that we have here in Cameroon. No. And let me tell you, like what Mr. Nick was talking about. If government was interested in professionalizing the educational sector of this country that will not even spend up to a year before you see Cameroon moving and challenging many other countries. Now you have not. You answered, have the experts. You have not answered my question about where is the funding going to? The grants, the research allowance, the budget that has been defended by the Senate. You are very that correct. Is supposed to use those to fund budgets. This university. Those budgets are not enough to do exactly what the universities are needed to do. Let me tell you, my director, for example, that's a guy who loves development. He has been receiving, like for, in my department, for example, you say three million, so no, it's too much. Two million, no, it's too much. You acquire just small, small kids that cannot even have to do anything. <laughs> okay. I think uh, you see that. <laughs> yeah, we're coming back. Yes. Engineer Dixon, <laughs> you wanted to react before I ask uh, my question. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Jervis. I think uh, I would not like to go specific. Uh, Prof. Sof has really come up with some uh, pertinent points, which I... I, I, I concur, you know, but um, I also believe that every country has its educational needs based on time and season. If you discover, I think Prof. Akumbong uh, made a statement here when the colonial masters yes. left us. They left us with a system of mm -hmm. education designed for a particular purpose. Yes, it took time for us to walk away from. Which we so, I mean, Just to confirm what you are saying, which John Henry Clark, the yeah. famous Pan-African and African-American said, when we regain our independence, we mimic the structures left by the colonial masters. Exactly. And that we can only read development by mimicking the structures. Yeah, exactly. Mr. Jervis, I think I should elaborate the fact that Cameroon has been evolving. We should not sound blatantly as if there's no evolution taking place. When the, in the 60s, the educational system was designed to create, uh, uh, train people for jobs, specific jobs, doctors, teachers, right as well as uh, they called uh, the tabu in yaoundi to train a few te uh, technicians and ombe was training technicians but these technicians were not well equipped to carry out mega projects that's why the government is solicited her from uh, french companies and the rest to do these things now the, the educational system was to create administrators who will, who manage system in the absence of the the colonial masters mm -hmm. now we they, they stabilized that he went now to scientific research. Okay? Mm -hmm. He went into research. That's why uh, the university started in, in, in Yaoundé. I think uh, Yaoundé won. They were doing things like Science de la Vie, de la Terre, and the rest, where people can do research and discover what we have in our forests and the rest. And we are now moving towards, away from scientific research because that alone cannot build an economy. That is why in uh, the early 2000s, precisely 2002, they came, the, 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 the Prime Minister gave their court, there was a ministerial order for the educational center to be professionalized. And we are saying something about just about 20, 20 something years. So we should not sound as if no evolution is taking place. A lot is taking place. But like I said in my, in my, in my opening, that there are many stakeholders. We can't stand here and be blaming just the ministry. And if we ourselves, and who are actors, they, they cannot think above the head of Yes, <laughs> if we ourselves, who are actors now in this in this sector, we are not taking our responsibility seriously. I'm talking the lecturers, the administrators, the founders, the founders who the are universe. big problems themselves, because most of them get into this business for money. How can a minister, uh, the minister like you said, a minister do the HNE program? I agree, but I've gone to the, the HNE program. You have mathematics course for 60 hours which constitute tutorials and the rest. You have a school teaching that course for 20, 24 hours, and then you blame the, the minister for, for, for lack of efficiency, and, head of state. and you, are, you are talking of the head of state. We should be pragmatic. How about the government universities? The government no, government 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 we should be pragmatic. No, lame land. Lame land. You have your time. We, no, we should call a spade a spade when we see it. And we should... 
And, and talking, we should not look at only the, the, the universities. I come now to the students. The students themselves have very bad reading hobby. Very bad. From secondary school, a child is trained, exam-oriented. That's good. They, they summarize material and give them. Then they transfer this problem to us in the university. You sit in class, you are elaborating a course. That child is waiting to, for you to give him or her no, speco. No, no, speco. Speco. What is speco? <laughs> Vaccine. <laughs> Okay, meanwhile, you are trying to develop the spirit of that child for that child to be holistic in reasoning and critical analysis. But the child is focused because the secondary school has given an orientation. And you look at the age of the child, most of them, most of them are 16, 17 years coming to the university with that kind of orientation. It's difficult for us. You teach a course and finish at the end. The moment you try to make that child reason, the child says you have killed, you have killed him or her. <laughs> so we should we should have a holistic view of it. And I want to conclude by saying that uh, where we are now in our country, we are very low as far as uh, production is concerned. We are retailers. Most of the business people are retailers. They get, go to China, yeah. get these things at retail. Yes, I'm not saying we should go away from that because if we want to get into manufacturing, it's not easy. I've tried it myself, Mr. Jervis. I remember when they bound uh, plastic papers, uh, the Minister of Environment bound plastic papers. I did a small research, contacted a small company in India, uh, Metro Machinery, because I thought that was a business opportunity, I reason like an entrepreneur. But just to have a machine that can produce me 2,000 cups, plastic cups, mm -hmm. uh, paper cups, and uh, 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 plastic bags, uh, paper bags, uh, sorry, yeah, mm -hmm. biodegradable bags, mm -hmm. is cost 150 million. A young graduate from school, do I get that kind of money? Mm. <laughs> and you don't speaking. have subvention. I don't have any subvention, <laughs> nothing. So, so I have to give up. So, I want to use this platform to elaborate that we, in, I, I'm an engineer. We have three levels of e engineering design, three levels. We have new design. This is when you are uh, going to research to create something new. We have innovative design. This is when you, you, you take something that's already existing and you are trying to adapt it to your context. And then we have adapt adaptative design this is the level where uh, uh, technicians maybe you you get an ac like we have in your room here is very nice i love i love the climate you get the ac you get a technician to come and install that ac that's adaptive design or to install a a, a a lifter so we should understand where we are and how we can really bring up the student to adapt themselves so which level are we now? okay the level we are we are at adaptive that's what i'm saying we are retailers. We are not producers. So we should not be but telling... We hand sanitizers during COVID now. At what capacity? <laughs> we also produce Mr. face masks. Mr. Jervis, if I come... If I tell a Our child... Our where is producing face yes, masks. Yes, if I tell a child... If I tell a child in the university, produce hand, hand sanitizer for your, your TV station, it's possible. True or false? But if I tell a child now, produce hand sanitizer for Douala, it becomes complicated. We have watched... I have watched a young, vibrant student from Cali University went out of market. Yes. I don't want to do publicity here. Yes. He won the Tony Lomelo yes. Award, 15 million. Yes. Okay. And when engaged into the paperback production. That's Anye Bovelin. Uh, I think it's Manga, something yes. like Manga. Yes. Yeah. He went into paper production, set up a company, had a very good office. But the demand alone from Douala, he could not meet up with the supply. Yes. And the business had to crush. It had to had to had to crumble. Yes, he could not have loan because the condition, the loan condition so, so was we so should, harsh. We should put things in perspective. We can train children how to do hand sanitizer. Let's not put it in the fear that they can just wake up one morning and do it, even though they should know so they can I do it. If I get you correctly, before coming to Professor Akumo, if I get you correctly, it's a system where we need to sit and redesign such a way that the economy, the bank, yes. has to be involved. Of course, the policy needs to be made flexible for our entrepreneurs. Of course, the policy also needs to be flexible for, in such a way that um, funders are held accountable for not providing or maintaining standards and yes. not equipping the yes. students yes. to yes. face the challenge yes. of the, the challenge time founders should be held accountable the, so that's what i'm saying it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, like a helix a triple helix where the government the founder and the lecturers and self including the students of course need to come and have a discussion because you said the students are max oriented yeah. and you are not far from the truth because i went out to schools last week and most of the students asked their opinion they want to do concours everybody's like concours 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 uh, Mr. Jervis, there are business books that I think we should expose our children to. I used to say this. I, I'll meet a level three ch a child. I say, how many business books have you read? There is a common one reach that poor dad. I uh, encourage almost all my children. Go and read that book. And some of them, when they take the courage to go and read, they come and tell me, say, wow. I said, all these things I'm saying, where do you think I get this knowledge from? How can you um, how can you build leadership skills? How can you build a team? It's difficult for our children to build a team. Okay. Thank a you. A business team. Oh, no,
Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, Professor Akumbong, mm -hmm. how do you explain the fact uh, that I want to, you to us to look at it now from different prism? We are talking about professionalization, and you stated the fact that we must look at Cameroonian problems to meet to pro solution the Cameroonian problem. Mm -hmm. 50 years after independence, plus the issue of provision of electricity is a problem, which is not rocket science. Mm -hmm. 50 years after independence, plus the issue of provision of water so is, is, is the problem. problem. 50 years we are still at the level of retailers the problem of roads still a problem our roads are not constructed by our engineers yeah. but we have since universities he talked about scientific since the university embraces a scientific nature we have sent out thousands of engineers thousands of uh petrochemical engineers medical, even person. medical personalities uh we have, their mortality rate is still very high what are we not getting right why are we still at this level or do we still say we have people like he said leadership issues where nobody can think above the head of state uh, no that 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 statement is actually not a right statement i am not for the government because i don't think that the yeah. government of cameroon has done good for cameroonians for a long period of time but i believe that the problem is not a governmental problem the problem comes back to primarily the inability of our uh, uh, citizens to be able to think through on how to solve our own problems by ourselves we we have this perspective that the real solutions to african problems are in europe but the real problem solutions to african problems are found within africans and in cameroonians with cameroonians in cameroon and as long as we think might be it is when you go learn technology from Europe that you can best be a good engineer in Africa, you have just made a mistake. Why? Because it is the same theories and principles that are used wherever you are. The practical knowledge is the same. Practical knowledge, when you see, I like what you just mentioned. Practical knowledge, which means what you do on the ground. In the context where you find yourself. What you do on the ground. I remember when we were schooling, we used to learn about fishing in Norway when we were yes, in Cameroon. I was, <laughs> and, I was uh, coming to you on that so, day. Just so, continue because you, you have taken that. that now, yes, which so, I was about to ask you. So we were learning about fishing in Norway while we were in Cameroon, and we we, have, we, we have we have it now. We have, in fact, we have a vast uh, forestry. We are looking about long so in, yeah, in Norway. In Norway. We are so, looking at the so, 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 in Australia, so that, and these are still functioning. That today. is that's, that is why I said. That is why I said no there's there no longer there. That's why I said we we were given a curriculum that was actually oriented towards solving the problem of Europeans. I was not saying that we should blame Europeans for our problem. I was saying that we kept that particular curriculum up to I think the two thousands before that curriculum was being uh, uh, gradually uh, re re restructured that you do not expect that most of us sitting here we should talk practical issues we should only talk theoretical issues because what we learned was not real in relation to our environment and so when most of us to succeed we need to go borrow knowledge from somewhere in order to come back and when we come the realities on the ground do not resemble what we learned and so it becomes very difficult to implement and that is where the challenge is found and so I love the topic of professionalizing our educational system in order to be able to raise the professionals who will be able to handle the problems which we are facing. You see, <laughs> uh, 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 the limiting factor we have is not that we do not have those good learning structures that we just mentioned. Because I will be sincere. It is not how strong... Uh, 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 should I use the word how equipped your lab is that you can become very productive yeah. have we started with the basics have we been able for example I remember when we were growing in when we were in primary school we used to they, when they talk of uh, 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 what is it called is it is handwork yeah. you were forced to make chairs to make different things to prove that you, that is where it was supposed to start and that is the technology that we're supposed to be encouraging to build from that level but look at it 
it was later on removed so they are collecting 100 and, eh? and money replaced the handwork <laughs> <laughs> who did that it was not sex education who did that who did that it was not the government it was not the government that replaced those, the handwork with, with food with money i used to use a needle and do a lot of work with it but today it is different why it has been replaced with what i can eat so if you can give me a hundred francs i'll give you the max that you need no more basic work so what i'm simply trying to say is it is true that we need well uh, 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 equipped labs but have we been able to begin with the little we have no yeah prof let me clue you in you have raised an issue and that's the same thing that engineer raised and also prof raised about uh the aspect of being practical oriented mm -hmm. now let's look at our professional institutions let's get to the level of engineering students uh those who graduate from this engineering student sometimes you put them in the professional industry they cannot identify these machines sometimes you also <laughs> put those who are let's say who have studied biochemistry you put them in the lab it's virtually very difficult you sometimes you even go to the hospital these days there was a report that somebody a professor gave about uh the training of medical doctors in Douala, and he was fired. I think he was punitively transferred somewhere else because he complained about something that was not being done right. Mm -hmm. And so, if we look at all this, yeah, if you look at all this, the, who do we blame for these? And is it not time for civil society like yourself to also start advocating that there is a need to look at our structure because civil society are more going towards political, mm -hmm. but forgetting the fact that they can it's also civil. advocate for it's professionalizing our educational system because it is also a problem because <laughs> if we look at this, this the system of Cameroon, let me cue in terms of the the the, the, the deposition look at uh, the internship that the students go to where, where do they what the internship report how where are the reports being kept look at the project the 400 level project where are they being kept look at those who do the thesis the thesis where are they the where where are we research work what is being used for today our high, the, for domestic for science for is no longer there royal uh, 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 manual level citizenship, citizenship manual level that also was back. part of the process that gave us the ability to understand agriculture is the also not there uh we are also looking at handwork has been transformed to financial gains and sometimes teachers also even just tell you that go and tell your father to mumu me universities <laughs> have changed a system where lecturers are selling books for marks mm -hmm. that if you don't have buy my books you don't have 20 marks you know validate this course lectures no it does prof it does i'm kind of if an investigative report and i will publish that because it does when you go i don't want to mention university Influence. it does i had a similar situation when i was in university a certain law i will not call the name a certain law course where you buy a, the textbook i have 10 marks for law and i failed that course because i did not buy that book and fortunately it was my minor so if you look at this it, it, it was a discouraging factor for me to continue the minor in law so if you look at all this where do we how do we get that from here now practically how do we get that from here uh it's like i mentioned earlier i said you do not expect for example when we're talking about entrepreneurship you can't expect a theoretician might be like me who is in the university faculty actually lecturing children based on what i read from books which has nothing to do with what is happening on the ground then i come and lecture that child then you expect that the child should become practical the child won't be practical so i think that if we have to professionalize professionalism simply means bringing professionals to give the knowledge it is not just putting down the theory we have to take what he brings in we now can develop it then we can develop to teach it in the tomorrow bed if we have to professionalize then we need to bring individuals who know what it is to do for example uh if you go to using a we have a lot of engineers who leave uh, the national polytechnic and come out but we still bring chinese to come and do roads why because those who we train whom we train in our various uh, universities do not have the professional touch and as a result of that since they do not have we the professional touch <laughs> at the end of the day you are expected to come out have a job maybe work to prove that you have done something but when you come when the time comes you need a job the government prefers to bring 
a Chinese company to do the same job that they train children expecting to to, to that should be able to do so at the end of the day at the end of the day you realize that our institutions do they have not professionalized the education we are talking about okay. so, so let me just learn so when because of that it becomes a limiting factor you do not expect that a young man who does not have any professional training should give any professional practical work on the ground okay you send them to go do uh, 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 internship maybe during two three months period most at times it's one month let's be practical and when they go out uh, even those whom they are going to do the practical there they know that this they, 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 are, they keep them aside they are only you send them to go and yes they send them <laughs> so, <laughs> do, uh, make tea. so they are practically doing nothing and so at the end of the day they come back to school with with uh, reports that are empty and that that report has no capacity to do anything <laughs> then i want to use another case uh wait just look at it we have a situation where i listened to the minister of uh, research and i Chente. she made mention of something when she was talking to researchers she said the time has come when as researchers we should not only research for our certificates we should research with the intention of making money that's what she said our research should be to solve problems for example, if you are in agriculture, you should not just write a research work which has no practical basis. You should have a farm where you can practicalize what yes. you have test inside. Farm. Yes, a test farm. Mm -hmm. Practicalize it and make it to, to give you money. It should not just be a theoretical something you are writing. And so at the end of the day, we realize that from what my brother said, it is not the head of state that has limited the thinking of the individuals it is the individuals who have limited <laughs> themselves they don't want yes they are struggling to remain on uh, on theoretical works and so we need to get to that place where okay. we get practical with what we are Briefly, doing so that I can, I can yes thank you very much uh, i think uh, when you look at uh, the enabling environment it is what has also and that enabling environment is created by who it's created by the government both of us i mean us no, also we are not no we that. also we do it Take for example, no no don't don't say that we are, that we are, not, we are not key <laughs> actors when Why it comes we to we are not key actors when it comes to the poor <laughs> professionalization of uh, the com of cameroonians the government holds the responsibility let me tell you during the construction of this bridge here my re my my director at the time my dean at the time they came up with a proposal it was supposed to be part that, that's a, that's an engineer in bridge construction but none of those experts, local experts, were taken into consideration. Even the students. Okay, there's some so the Chinese come in now with, with their own experts. They come to build the bridges. They go back with the technology. And no then we are transfer left empty. of technology. Normally, they were supposed to take our. It is in the it's a, it's a condition. Let me tell you, when I studied in China for seven years, for example, when the Americans come to build anything there, the Chinese form 80% mm. of their workforce. Yes. And that's why they have succeeded in driving the Americans out of the whole place. Go to China and see what China is all about. Okay, Prof. Hey. Dixon said something that <coughs> uh, doctors that we have PhD holders cannot work in team. Yes, they true. cannot work in team. So should we not blame the government for the fact that instead of researchers to see how they can work in team mm -hmm. to develop projects, they are instead competing, competing with one another. another. It is. Is it now a state problem? Excuse me, please. No. This is not. <laughs> this oh, is not always it. true. It is not always true. Because let me tell you, I have my team. I have a research team. We work together in harmony. I had worked with so Maybe many. Maybe the case projects. you're exposed to, but we cannot say it's not true because you are. <laughs> no, I'm, say, I'm saying it's not always true. That's what I've okay. said. It's not always true. And then again, now please, to, not to take your style. Let me say that, uh, like what uh, uh, Prof was saying there. You were right, you were right, and then with what to what the engineer Dixon was saying to you, we must adapt all of what we have acquired to our own environment. Yes, adapting our context. Those, yes, to our own context. But we are adapting our prof. That's why we are never adaptative. <laughs> as no, 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 no. No, 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 for those who study locally, for example, without doing any practical work, it becomes very, very difficult for yourself to even adapt what you have studied. It's a vicious cycle. You learn theory, you give back theory. But let me tell you that for those who have the expertise, for example, I was almost crying here because with all of what I learned abroad, 
I was going to apply it here in Cameroon. And it was almost regretting why I ever returned to Cameroon. You should not and you are one of the few who had scholarship and returned. I returned. But then, you see, I could not look at my hands. <laughs> I work on my farm. I applied the knowledge there. There are local guys that have that, that invited them, and you're working on that. Let me just say one, one minute. minute. And we are at the point of creating a cooperative for those particular one local farmers. We are almost out of okay, uh, uh, I, I wanted to say something about, uh, okay, to support the point where he comes in to say the government is also having a problem. We are not refusing that. Look at it. In uh, petrochemical engineering in Cameroon, the curriculum that we have that is supposed to raise petrochemical engineers does not is limited it can't actually risk petrochemical engineer and we have petrol mm -hmm. and so we need to get to a place where we actually go deeper okay if you look at what is supposed to be for the bachelor level is meant actually for hnd mm -hmm. which is very limiting yeah. but that's what we we, we we give the children and say you are an engineer at the bachelor level so there is a problem with that so okay. there's need for work to be done on that particular issue i'm sure because this program i wanted to talk on that base because be, i'm sure we maybe we need to talk about this program next week eh, because <laughs> a lot of issues like you just raised the issue of petrochemical engineering and yeah. i wanted to ask him a question why we don't have bachelors in petrochemical engineering in cameroon yeah. we only have it at the level of the master's the level master's. but why don't we start from this level where exactly. these kids can be specialized, specialized. more on i can respond to that really very quick. briefly we are taking this time eh? <laughs> okay, okay, no, okay. yeah you you, you respond <laughs> to that yet <laughs> Uh, let me just take on this message why the camera gets you. Um, nice program, Mr. Javis. I wish to know the reason why PhD theses are not deposited in university libraries. <laughs> Many PhD holders in Cameroon do not have their thesis in the library. How then do we foster research? Ask the professor on your panel if their thesis are in the <laughs> library for educational <laughs> consultation. <laughs> professor, have written books and articles but not published locally and not even in the reach of other young researchers how do we advance education in cameroon for bell clinton so from boya this good. one right he says uh, can the government permit the creation of private yeah. Can the government create the per, uh, can the government permit the creation of private aeronautic universities in this country? Uh, it is just <laughs> to confirm the fact that the Cameroonians can't think above the head of state. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is uh, it's a nice program. I really wish you guys can continue the program uh, next week because it is a very good program. This is coming from Thomas in Boya. I hope this one that you people are con contributing in Boya, uh, it means that there's electricity now in Boya. <laughs> uh, the, people, where the, people, yeah, the people in Munya have been for over three months now without electricity which is a chief town and uh, i keep asking what is the fate of the business owners those who run business with electricity but it's a <laughs> dumb somewhere there where do we go from here yeah I, I just wanted to say that in issue of professionalism in at the individual level we can achieve that but collectively i still see the government as a the the, the, the coach or the referee yes, they are the coach. yeah and who, who's in many cases absent I actually, like some about three, five years ago, did a, a practical analysis because during holidays, I used to do like a practical trade fair for primary school children. I did a, 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 a camp sometimes about five years ago in Bonamusa, the year around Denver for primary school children, teaching them how to fabricate, yeah, teaching them how to fabricate maybe a cars, cars that can move power with batteries. A teaching how to make ACs and I did this for primary school children. I wanted to experiment something, and this the way I wish this student copied this and could do it. My the highest there was a team primary five. She that lady, she could do work. that practical and demonstrate, and the car could move. Mm -hmm. But I actually I, I teach physics. I teach practical at the high school. But when I carry this to my students of high school. Came when to I tried to uh, implement this to them, it was very difficult for them to understand. So you are confirming what he said that they are exams. telling them just stop knowledge. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> now I'm saying that the problem should start at the. So a, we should go also blame the state. Okay, yeah, the problem physics, starts I at the base. The, 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 no. the problem starts at the base. So it you is, are now coming it back. It is the government that defines the policy. The, the government can decide that every. It's both sides. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Not every both sides. The primary, the primary level, embraced it and made good use of it. The yeah, secondary level, 
did not embrace it because because they, they were have an maybe no, had a different no, they have no, let, me, let me come let me come yes yeah. so who programmed the primary mm. level Teachers. to think that way to embrace it and who programmed the secondary level not to embrace it under the same head of state <laughs> no i don't want to think that way yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm saying that our if i'm saying that now to define the policy we can start from the prim that was just to confirm that we can start from the primary level down there i implement a kind of I wanted just to see how we can train we can train children to be creative from the young age, and I was doing that in such a way that you use uh, local materials, not to, uh, to fabricate these things. Like if you go to the German model, when they do that, they already have prefabricated uh, materials or models that children just fit in, and then they can make a car to move. But I was doing this using local materials, making uh, so that the children can maybe use local materials and produce things and move, and we can be professional to me i am a self-trained solar engineer today nobody trained me I, le I did my training on youtube and the books are read and j with the knowledge of physics i read i can i, I, uh, I, I run my own space uh, kind yeah, of I, I small you, solar company yes, today that i do panels. it is my individual development and maybe due to the leadership training I've had in the past. So you are now and going back to the fact that it is not only state level because yeah, I'm saying that why did the head of state we need an we you? need an orientation. Why did you have yeah. to think about the head of state? And we need an orientation because in the secondary school I tried to maybe bring aspects of leadership to the children. It is very hostile for the student <laughs> to accept this kind of things. Because I've already been planned trained Program, to think in a particular pass, way. Pass yeah, they, they just want to pass. <laughs> Thank you. We are when you want to teach something, they'll tell you that said, does this thing come in the GC? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what they ask me all the time. So it is after I've unlevered, many of them will come back to me and say, no, this thing you are telling us, design. we are now facing in okay. real life. And we're out of time. Greetings to yeah. the panelists. Very interesting topic. But Let me ask this observation. Uh, the idea of books to be used in schools has been politicized. The right books yes. hardly find themselves in the school, school list. Parents and students have been brainwashed to a, a point that they won't buy any book outside the book list, no matter how useful it is so. Thank you very much. Uh, we are out of time. I just wish that maybe next week Sunday we take part two of this program because a lot of messages uh, 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 which, is, which is coming in. So I think uh, maybe next week we'll take this same program and um, we'll extend the time. So we can now look at other factors like some of the aeronautic and uh, also petrochemical engineering. we we'll also looking at uh, the aspect of uh, the economic mm -hmm. aspect of it. So I think that is a whole lot of things that we have to look at because the students are now preparing for GCE. It's good that they should also now also look at our uh, next week orientation as far as career orientation is concerned. What are the areas where uh, the students could focus, not just on what they think that they could be because messages here uh, yeah, talk about the aspect of students going to think at biomedical and writing uh, concours and the rest. So Prof, I want to really appreciate you for taking time of your busy schedule to come here. Thank you for coming. I hope to thank you so much, Mr. Jones, for inviting me to come and share this knowledge. Uh, thank thank you. you very much, Engineer Dixon. Uh, the first time you have come and somebody says you're not joining the CPTN. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you very you much, Mr. Uh, Jervis. You, uh, you know, every every <laughs> human being is a political <laughs> being. So uh, we we should be very progressive in our thinking and mature enough <laughs> to, to see things progressive in, in, a, in a holistic, yeah, in a holistic yeah, manner. So, yeah, going towards the... We can't, we can't just, we can't just <laughs> criticize <laughs> uh, continuously, you know. We create a balance. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Akumbo. It's my pleasure, and uh, I think uh, what we have been able to develop here is very important, and I think those who listen to us out there should know that there is much to be done. And we are the ones who begin it, not necessarily waiting for the government. Nick Anu, thank you for coming. Mm. Thank you for having me here today. And thanks to our fellow listeners and watchers across the globe. And yeah, we look forward to maybe having more of these discussions as uh, students are preparing to go to the university so that they can have a routine of what career path to take. Okay. Uh, I want to thank all those who took our time to participate on the program. Um, if you are there, you want to be part of the program, you can reach me on the number on your screen. 
0876 I will include you into a WhatsApp group. If the topic is of your interest, that will publish weekly. You can indicate your participation is free and no charge. And also, I want to seize this opportunity to wish you will be celebrating your birthday on Thursday. Doris from the uh, Cali University of Boya, a student on the School of Engineering. I want to wish you a happy birthday on Thursday as you celebrate. May the good God continue to guide and protect you as you celebrate your birthday. Also, I want to thank you, Desmond Akeba, Desli Allen, those who took our time to produce this program to ensure we have the best of quality and the best of streaming. This program comes to you live every Sunday at exactly 12 to 1.30 p.m. And also rebroadcast is on Sunday, 10.30 p.m. Today, Sunday, 10.30 p.m. If you miss the program, you can go to our YouTube channel, which is BT Media Group. The program is our, on our YouTube channel. You can have a full broadcast of the program. Or on our Facebook page, BT Media Group, where we have a short excerpt that we posted on the program. Or on our, another Facebook page, My Media Prime Television. Get to us on Twitter, My Media Prime Television. I leave you with this. No matter the matter, what matters is your matter. And what should matter for you is that you should be professional in what you do and not what you say. My name is Tar Mai Javis from Camus Commercial Capital Dweller. Feng Gujong Bange. Bye bye. Welcome to a new world of TV broadcasting. My Major Prime. News. Discovery. Culture. Sports. Entertainment. A BT Media Group channel. Week slogan. The African Eye. My Major Prime. Is 80% of content in English language. And 20% in French. 24 on 